So now let's add some of the other props we created to the scene. So click on Add Character from the toolbar and from the Add Character dialog under Prop Characters, select Broken Table. Click OK. And there's the table we created earlier. So let's select that and move it so that it's sitting just in front of the stairs and between them. That should be fine. And now we can add a couple of chairs to the scene from the chair prop we created earlier. So again, click on Add Character and under Prop Characters, this time select Chair and add one of those to the scene. And we can move that chair out a little, rotate it. And place it under the table. You'll notice that this chair doesn't have the mass object display that we used when we built the chair. And that's because just as with the chandelier, you can turn the visualization of that mass object on or off before you save out. And that's exactly what I've done here. So let's move that under there. And now I'm going to go on and add a second chair to sit over this side of the table and I'll pick it up again once I've done that. So now we have a scene with a chandelier, a broken table and a couple of chairs and of course our original set with the character. But our viewport is getting quite small at this stage so I'm going to go down here and start to collapse using this icon on the left hand side of each of the characters. I'm going to collapse their timeline event tracks so that we get a larger viewport and a smaller timeline area. Now in this scene, we're not going to need the banisters we created earlier to break. We're going to have the character leap from this staircase. So let's select those now and delete each one. We'll just pretend the banister isn't there in this case. And now let's move the character round. So face the other way. And let's move him a little closer to the edge of the banister. Just about there is good. And now we want to create an event in his timeline, so we need to expand that again. Right click on his timeline and create a behavior event. Let's make sure it starts at frame zero. I'm going to change it to a jump and dive behavior. Let's stretch it out for the time being to finish it about frame 200. And now let's simulate. And you can see that the character leaps across and at the minute crashes in to the chandelier. So there's a couple of things I'm going to do here. First of all I'm going to move the character back a little because he's leaping a bit too far across over on top of the chandelier. I'm going to reduce the length of the jump and dive behavior down to about 75 frames and then immediately after that event I'm going to add another behavior event and make this one the hands reach and look at 2.0. And for the look at target of this behavior, I'm going to select this candle base just here. And I'm going to select the same object for the left hand reach target. Just want that candle base. And now let's simulate. And now the character leaps across and reaches for this left hand candle base. So what we want to do now is add a constraint at the point where he makes contact, which is just about there. Now we'll right click in the character's timeline and create a constraint event. Move that down onto the next track there and line it up with the time slider at the point of contact of the hand and the chandelier. We're going to make this a join bodies constraint. And we're going to select the character's hand and the chandelier. and right click to accept that. Now we can take the hands reach and look at behavior and end it at the beginning of this constraint. Now let's simulate again. The character leaps and grabs and hangs on with his left hand to the chandelier. But he's a little bit lifeless as he dangles there so let's right click in the timeline and create another behavior event. We'll start this one immediately after the and reach and look at. We'll make this one a writhe behavior. So select writhe 2.0 and we'll drag this out all the way to the end of the active pose at frame 500. Now let's simulate again. He leaps, grabs the chandelier and at the end of that constraint falls while writhing and crashes into the table. Now let's go to the point in the motion where the character 
makes contact with the table just about there. And we're going to add a sever event to the broken table's timeline so we can expand that right click and select create sever event make sure it's just at about the right point and simulate once more the character leaps dangles, rise, falls and breaks the table as he makes contact now as always you can change the animation very easily of course just by changing some of the timings of the events or by changing some of their parameters. I, for example, have changed this animation so that the entire table breaks when the character lands on it just by changing the timing of the constraint with which he holds onto the chandelier. And I would encourage you to experiment with this scene by changing the timings of some of these events and their parameters to see what kind of results you can achieve.